What's up guys, welcome back to another live in the RU tier. Today I decided to just piece together a team. I have not tested it, I do not know how it's gonna work, but I decided to build a team around Zangoose. Toxic boost Zangoose is a pretty big threat, especially now with Tyrantrum and Steelix gone from the tier. It can do a lot better and it doesn't have to run close combat either, which is really cool. I'm leaving that role for Hitmonlee there at the end, so uh, let's just jump into a game and see uh, what kind of match we can get. I'm probably going to have to pause it because it's a little bit later at night, so I don't know if we're going to get any games really quickly, so I will do that, and we will be right back. Okay, never mind. <laughs> we got a team uh, as soon as I was about to go get a bottle of water, but I guess I'll do that after this game. So my opponent has a uh, their own Hitmonlee, uh, cool Rapid Spinner in uh, Blastoise, Mega Glalie, Pikachu, which can be a threat, but not while we have Tangrowth around, it should be okay to deal with. And Drapion is a little bit scary, but that's fine. I do have a Choice Banded Flygon right here that I kind of want to lead with. Uh, seems like a pretty solid lead against the majority of my opponent's team. So I am just going to do that. Hopefully he doesn't lead with the Glalie, as he does, and that's not good for us. Uh, I can just switch into Alamomola on this thing, though, and nothing's going to appreciate taking a Toxic minus the Drapion, of course. So this is perfectly fine. I'm just going to make the switch here, and uh, we'll see what my opponent wants to do. I do not want to take an Ice Shard on turn one, so uh, I am just going to switch. My opponent goes for a Freeze Dry, though, catches the Alamomola, gets a crit and a Freeze. Awesome, so I'm going to have to thaw this thing later. Um, I am okay to potentially switch out here. I could have gone for a U-turn right there, so that was kind of risky, but, uh, I like him on Lee here, uh, does pretty well, as, uh, his freeze dry is a special move. He gets another crit, so this thing is holding a Mega Stone and a, um, and a Scope Lens. So, it's, uh, it's a very strange set, but, uh, we have to deal with that. I'm gonna go for the knock, uh, the, uh, fake out right here, it's gonna do a little bit to this Blastoise. We are gonna get our Unburden boost, that was... Uh, normal gem boosted. I just need to get a little bit of damage off on this thing So I will go for the high jump kick that does 63% as he goes for a skull then knocks us out That is fine I am going straight into Alamomola and I am just clicking scald and thawing my aloe out because I need it for the Mega Glalie I know he has freeze dry, but a crit did 86 So uh, I can't necessarily come in on it, but at least I can pivot around um, so I am just gonna go for the Scald right here. If he goes into Glalie and gets burned, that would be amazing for us. We do have the Healing Wish on here, that's to bring, uh, Zangoose back from a bunch of rounds of Toxic. We are gonna Thaw right there, we're gonna get this Scald off on Pikachu, and, uh, not get a burn, unfortunately, but now I can just go into Tangrowth right here, get the Regenerator, be back up to 90%, as my opponent decides to go for a Fake Out. That's a very interesting Pikachu set, don't know what this thing gets, but, uh, I'm probably just gonna Earthquake right here, nothing on his team wants to come in on it, uh, except maybe the Glalie. Opponent goes for Nuzzle, and that is going to paralyze us, but we are going to get this Earthquake off and knock out the Pikachu. Very annoying little Pokemon right there, uh, the mascot, but uh, we have answers for Glalie a little bit later on. Decides to go into Sneasel. Uh, I'm don't really, I do not really want to switch out on this thing, uh, but I don't think I have a choice. I have to keep my Tangrowth alive. It walls a lot of my opponent's team, uh, especially the Hitmonlee specifically. So I am just going to switch into Alamomola right here. He's probably going to go for a knockoff, but that's okay. Going to lose our item. And uh, I'm just going to throw off a Toxic right here, actually. And try to get something uh, whittled down very quickly. As he goes to Glalie, that's awesome. We are going to get the Toxic off. Unfortunately, we do not have Protect on this set. So I have to pick a Sack <laughs> right here. Uh, and I think that's going to be Banette. Um, that could be it. Tangrowth uh, can probably take the freeze dry, not very well, but uh, I can pivot around. Yeah, let's go to Tangrowth. Um, we'll see how much this does. This is a nice amount, 73%, as you can see. And uh, I have to go, uh, I think, back into Alamomola here. And as he goes for another freeze dry, that's going to do 59 to Aloe. He's not going to get the freeze, luckily. Uh, 59, huh? Okay, so I heal, heal up to 68, so I should be able to take it after. I could sack off Tangrowth, it's it's paralyzed at this point, so. Uh, obvi and uh, he has gone for Freeze Dry every turn. I'm tempted to just calc how much this Freeze Dry did to Alamomola. Uh, Glalie, uh, Wallbreaker versus uh, Alamomola. Let's see how much Freeze Dry is supposed to do. 43 to 51, is that what it did to us? I did 58, so he's actually more specially invested, which means I think he might not actually have the uh, the Ice Shard on this thing. I'm um, not Protect on Zangoose, so I can't stall this thing out. However, um, I think maybe Banette is the play. And what I'll do is I'll just go... I don't have any... Uh, well, I do have priority on this thing, but I'm just going to go for the Pursuit in case he wants to switch out. 
Uh, and he does. Awesome. Okay, so we're gonna catch that thing on the switch, and he is gone. So he lost his biggest check to our Flygon now. We are, um, banded Flygon, so anything's gonna drop on his team. Uh, here I'm just gonna go straight into it, actually. I'm not even gonna hesitate. Uh, he goes for his Swords Dance. That is perfectly fine. I'm just gonna fire off an Earthquake and be able to knock this thing out. He cannot switch anything in right here, and we still have our Alamomola at a nice amount of health. We're gonna take out the Drapion right there, even if he was Shooka, I think he was going down to a Bandit Earthquake. Uh, and now the Sneasel can, can come in, but it's gonna be taking Life Orb damage. I can switch right back into Alamomola, no problem right there. And uh, he's gonna go for the Icicle Crash, as you can see that does absolutely nothing. With a Weakened Blastoise in the back, uh, I can actually just fire off a Wish right here. As he chooses to go into Hitmonlee, that is perfectly fine. Now with the Wish up, I can go for a Toxic. If he goes for a Fake Out, we're gonna be back up to full after his Fake Out hits, or near full. And uh, as he is normal gem, and uh, we are gonna get our wish right here. And now he has to go for a uh, for a high jump kick, I think. So I'm gonna switch into Banette actually, predicting that uh, as he does go for the poison jab. Actually, okay. Uh, he could have knockoff on this thing, which would be okay. I'm just gonna go for the shadow sneak, damage this thing, do 60%. As he does go for the earthquake, okay. So he doesn't seem to have it. Uh, I am just going to go for another sneak right here. If he switches out his Hitmonlee, he loses his speed boost, which means he will no longer be faster than our Flygon, which is very nice. As he does, let it drop right there. He can now go into Sneasel and uh, Pursuit Trap us, but that game is pretty much won. So after a uh, very unfortunate crit freeze on turn one, um, and a, a following crit on the next turn, uh, we were able to, uh, to pull that one out. It's a very weird team, guys. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be able to win every game, but uh, oh my god. God, banded Flygon this game, guys. Oh, wow, the things that it does to my opponent's team. Um, I'm actually just going to uh, probably lead with uh, him only, actually, to counter the uh, uh, the Sneasel, uh, not the Sneasel, the, um, the Smeargle lead, as he does have a Ghost in the back. Uh, however, I'm just gonna go for a knockoff because if he dark voids me, that's okay uh, But I just want to be able to catch the hoopa and also potentially get rid of this thing's item Which might be a sash a scarf who knows we will see in time uh, But we actually speed that tie this thing because we're not uh, max speed. We're 273 uh, I prefer to be adamant on my hitmonlee just for a little more power This is kind of a hyper offense team minus the regenerator core everything else is very very offensive We're max attack adamant uh, on um, Banet, so uh, he goes for the spore, so he doesn't have the uh, dark void, so that's cool. Uh, I now have sleep fodder, which is all right. Uh, he's gonna start setting up hazards, I would assume. Um, I'm just gonna go into something faster here, which is Flygon, and something's dropping to an earthquake basically uh, on his team. Maybe not the sand slash, we will see, but everything else just dies, so uh, it's looking pretty good. I uh, gotta watch out for a scarf magneton, that could be a little bit of an issue, especially if he makes predictions with it. Um, but other than that, uh, let me start the timer on this guy. And actually, guys, I'm just gonna pause it. I need some water. I'll be right back. Alright, so I got back uh, about a second too late for you guys to see the turn, but basically I switched into Flygon as my opponent went for the, uh, Sticky Webs, which is perfectly fine. I also have Rapid Spin on Hitmonlee, uh, to get the normal gem boost. Uh, but with the webs up, I don't think that's really gonna, uh, help us a lot. Um, actually, it might bring us to a decent amount, amount of speed regardless, so... Uh, I'm just going to U-turn on this turn, knock out his Smeargle, and now we're going to go into something safe, which would probably have to be Tangrowth, because we're Assault Vested. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can take the um, the Boom Burst from x uh, and then hit it with a knockoff and get rid of its specs, which would be very useful for later in the game. Uh, seeing as it's scrappy and it can hit our whole team. <laughs> so, uh, again, Flygon just wins this game, so... Um, his, uh, his x blood does decide to come out. I can also Focus Blast right here and just take this thing out uh, right away, which is an option, um, which is might be what I'm going to do. Uh, alternatively, I could switch into Alamomola because uh, he's more than likely going to go for a Fire Blast knowing that Hyper Voice can't take us out. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And we'll see right here uh, as he goes for the Boom Burst. Okay, so he plays it safe. Uh, unfortunately, we are going to lose our Alamomola because of that, but thankfully we still have our Flygon in the back. That is Specs damage, so I'm just going to throw off a Scald right here in case he wants to switch for whatever reason. Uh, I don't see why he would, but um, we're just going to do that anyway. And uh, then we just go into Flygon and I think U-turn and potentially sack something else and then start clicking Earthquake because it demolishes his team, so... We'll do that, and uh, 
I actually want to calc if a banded earthquake from Flygon can take out. Uh, let's see, choice band, earthquake. This is jolly perfect against uh, a an Exploud. I know it doesn't have the best defense. Uh, earthquake does 84 to 99, so it is uh, taking us out. He does knock us out with the boom burst right there. Um, I'm gonna just go into Flygon at this point and just U-turn out, put him in range of the Earthquake, and uh, we'll sack something else here, and I think we're gonna sack our Hitmonlee because I don't feel like waiting around for it to get woken up, uh, to be perfectly honest. Uh, having Tang Growth around is very nice for the Magneton and the Sand Slash, so I'm definitely keeping that. Uh, it also deals with the, uh, with the Hoopa relatively well because of the Assault Vest, so... Uh, we'll see what my opponent wants to do here. If he switches out into anything that's great, that's initiative for us, I'll take it. Zangus still hasn't hit the field this episode. Hopefully we'll be able to do something with it. Uh, it's also a late game cleaner because it has quick attack. Fire punch for the uh, Magneton, which is very nice. So we could potentially pull out a win with that. We will see though. The sticky webs are a little bit hindering uh, to Zangus specifically. But uh, I am just going to sack him only. I don't have time to spin. Uh, I gotta just nuke his team with Flygon as much as possible. Uh, nothing really wants to take an Earthquake, so we already covered that. Uh, that's gonna do 45%. We are gonna switch directly into Hitmonlee. Let it go down to the Boom Burst right here. As uh, he is gonna go for that, we are gonna drop. And then we can go back into Flygon. And now we click Earthquake. Because we do not want anything coming in. Once the Magneton is gone, I can just click Outrage and it will knock out the uh, the three remaining Mons on my opponent's team. I can calc it for Sand Slash. Let's just see. Uh, should do a very, very good amount. Uh, NU Offensive Rapid Spin does 69 to 82, so we just need a little bit of damage on it, not much at all. And uh, pretty much anything's dropping right here. He cannot switch anything in on an Earthquake. Uh, at this point. His Metacham might be Scarf, but Scarf Metacham does not outspeed Scarf Flygon, which is very nice. Uh, neither does Scarf Hoopa or Scarf Magneton for that fact, for that matter. So, recognizing Flygon as a win condition early is uh, coming in clutch. Uh, I don't mind that I sacked Alamomola and, um, and him only. I know that Tangrowth could have taken the Boom Burst probably a little bit better than Alamomola did, not by much though and uh, knocked out this uh, Exploud with a Focus Blast. The problem is if he went for Fire Blast, he was knocking us out, it was doing more. So I couldn't uh, I couldn't run the risk. But um, yeah, I actually don't know um, if Tangrowth, let's see, Tangrowth, Assault Vest, let's calc this uh, against Exploud. I know I can take the Boom Burst. I'm almost 100% sure I can take the Boom Burst, yeah. Uh, but Fire Blast is a roll, so that's why I switched. Um, I could have just knocked off, but he's gonna go into Sand Slash actually and take this Earthquake, which is gonna do a tremendous amount. So this is the only thing on his team that could have taken one. Um, now we're gonna knock it out, and uh, I'm assuming the Metacham is gonna come in and try to fake us out. Uh, that could be an option. It is Metacham that's gonna come in. Uh, I'm gonna go directly into Banette because I don't really lose anything by doing that. And uh, we frisk the Life Orb, which is good to know. Goes for a high jump kick, we are immune. I guess he didn't see that we had a ghost in the back. And uh, now I can just Shadow Sneak this thing. He can switch out into Exploud. He actually chooses to go into Magneton, which is uh, interesting. And he's gonna take 24% for it. And uh, now I'm going to just click Will-O-Wisp, honestly, and just get a little bit more residual damage on this. Uh, potentially so that Tangrowth can take it out a little bit easier. I think we are packing the Earthquake, but anyway. Um, with his Exploud at 55%, his Metacham at 51 and his Hoopa, which is a, a piece of paper on the physical side, I want to calc Toxic Boosted Quick Attack. Um, let's see, Hoopa, Offensive Trick Room versus Zangoose. We're not adamant. Um, let me just make sure that, yeah, this is adamant. We're jolly, I believe. Jolly, uh, quick attack, uh, that's right, it's a ghost, uh, that, <laughs> that's not gonna do anything. He's gonna go uh, for the bolt switch as I go for the will-o'-wisp, um, I'm kinda predicting him to go into Exploud now because he loses absolutely nothing by doing that, so I kinda don't wanna Shadow Sneak, but at the same time I lose absolutely nothing because his Metacham is a life orb variant and it's at 51%, so Flygon wins at this point. I can just sneak this thing, knock it out. If he goes into Exploit, it's fine. We just go back into Flygon and fire off some more Earthquakes. Uh, he's going to go into uh, Magneton. And actually, we didn't get a burn off. We, he actually missed. I didn't notice that. But um, at this point, just in case this thing is shook up. <laughs> yeah, right. As if it's living Earthquake anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, I lose nothing by just Shadow Sneaking, honestly. 
I lose absolutely nothing. He's just going to Volt Switch anyway. And uh, Scarf Hoopa doesn't outspeed my Flygon. And I'm pretty sure we take it out. So let me see here. Um, damage Calculator. Let's go back to Flygon for a second. Uh, Choice Banded versus Hoopa. Uh, yeah, that's gone. It's completely gone. <laughs> Flygon comes in here. And we just click Earthquake again. Uh, Choice Scarf Magneton does uh, outspeed us, actually. Um, because we're not Scarf, we're Banded. I completely forgot about that. But uh, even Choice Scarf Hoopa as well. But if he's Choice Scarf Hoopa, he doesn't have as much power, so Tangrowth can, can wall it pretty much. And then just go for a knockoff, get rid of Explod's Choice Specs, live a Boom Burst a lot easier, so on and so forth. He could also be Sashed, so I'm not going to play around with that. I'm just going to go into Tangrowth right here. As he goes for the... Shadow Ball, that's going to do 46%. That does not look like Sashed. Uh, my play here every single time is to knock off, no matter what. He goes for a sub. We are going to be able to take out the sub with a knockoff. It's quad effective. Uh, so he is not a Sash variant, which means we can come back in as soon as we go down from this Boom Burst, uh, which at this point we might not because of the ch choice specs being gone. Um, in fact, can't I just... Uh, yeah, I can just let this go down. Uh, he goes for Ice Beam, that is going to take us out. Flygon comes in, fires off uh, an Earthquake twice, and wins. <laughs> so, Flygon putting in a lot of work this match. Uh, took out, what, like, five Pokemon? Six? How many did we take out? Did we take out his entire team with Flygon? <laughs> Gotta love that Levitate ability, man. It's so clutch. Colton has this in the NBA, and I want it so bad because it's really, really good. Uh, I mean, it's really good in this tier and other tiers. The the reason it doesn't strive in higher tiers is because of uh, very, very threatening Pokemon like Mamoswine and uh, Weavile that are around that can just Ice Shard it even if it's Scarfed. So uh, there's a lot of Levitators as well, which nullifies the Earthquake. Uh, there's better ground types in general in higher tiers, but that doesn't take away from the fact that Flygon's actually not garbage. It's really, really good because of uh, its ability coupled with its amazing typing. Um, just makes it so strong i mean the fact that it doesn't get hit by webs or spikes and it's a defogger uh it can be run sash banded leftovers defensive uh all this because of its typing it's it's really really awesome i love it uh, and i'm really jealous that, that colton has it and um yeah uh i i want it but anyway uh we're gonna take off this uh this explod right here and he's gonna go into hoopa and we are taking that thing out 100 percent of the time i don't care how physically defensive you are you're going down. So that's going to be the end of that game. We are able to beat Cynthia's fangirl and uh, we will continue on to the third and final game more than likely. My opponent has a Golbat, Jellicent, Sigalyph, so a very, very annoying core, uh, defensive core uh, that we have a hard time breaking through. Uh, Zangoose does have knockoff for the Jellicent though. So we might be able to pull this through. This might be the first time that you guys see Zangoose in this game, uh, in this live actually. Uh, I'm probably just going to lead with Flagon because it's my overall best lead against my opponent's team as he chooses to lead with Deancey. Uh, he does have quite a few uh, Pokemon in the back that can switch into an Earthquake, so I am just going to go for the U-turn right here. It's going to do 18% resisted. Earthquake would have probably not taken it out anyway. Uh, and my opponent's uh, going to go more than likely for Rocks right here. I don't see him really going for anything else. He goes for Moonblast actually, lowers our special attack. Which is not a problem. I mean, this thing doesn't have magic bounce. I can pretty much just throw a uh, toxic off. So my opponent goes into Sigalyph, actually. It's not Flame Orb, which means, which leads me to believe that this thing is more than likely Life Orb. Um, but it still walls me completely. So I have to switch into, I think, Banette is my play. And uh, we do scout for the Life Orb right there. He is going to go for a Psychic. Now, my opponent's not going to want to take a Shadow Sneak right here. So I can make a play and go for Pursuit, um, expecting him to switch out right here, which I think is actually the play. Uh, we'll see if he actually switches out. He does not, he stays in the Psychics. Okay, so uh, a little bit of a strange play, but it's okay. Um, Zangoose, he doesn't have anything super effective for it. So I can go into it here, fire off a knockoff. I think we should be able to take a Psychic. Um, let's go for the knockoff right here. We don't lose much from it. If it goes into Golbat, he's going to lose his Eviolite. Goes into Jellicent, it's going to get two hit KO'd. Uh, goes into Deancey. I mean, Deancey would probably be the best play right here because I don't have anything to hit it with. Uh, I could be packing. I don't know if Zangoose gets Earthquake, actually. Let's check that out. 
Um, earthquake, 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 where are you, Earthquake? No, it's definitely not in here. Uh, my opponent chooses to switch out into the Golbat, so that's awesome. We are going to get rid of its Eviolite right there. And uh, now I want to calc to see if a Golbat can take this hit. I don't know if you guys know how strong this actually is. Uh, all out attacker, badly poisoned, uh, with facade to a Golbat, uh, physically defensive, that does not. <laughs> okay, that does not have its Eviolite. <laughs> Wow, that's insane. That's adamant though. We do have to take that off and put it on Jolly, but that's still 80%. Uh, I think we have a very good shot at knocking this thing out. Actually, we might not even be Jolly, are we? Yeah, we are. Okay, okay. Uh, but Facade is still the play. Uh, as we are able to knock out the Gold Bat right there, we only take 6% uh, on that turn. Actually, 5%, but uh, you get what it is. Uh, it's actually 94.1, so it is 6. Uh, but we are able to knock that thing out. I am not staying in on Deancey. I cannot hit this thing. Uh, so I will just go into my Alamomola once again as my opponent goes for a Diamond Storm. It's not going to do much at all. Gets the defense boost, but that's not going to matter. He does have a Sigilyph in the back though, so I think my play here is to switch back into Zangoose. The problem is if he stays in or if I just take one round of poison, that's already pretty bad. So I think... Uh, what's my play here? Uh, Flygon's gonna be my play. I don't think he's gonna Moonblast on this turn. He's gonna go into the Jellicent, actually. Okay, so interesting. Um, he lost one of his Flyers. The other one's around. Uh, but I have to U-turn right here. I can't stay in. Uh, as you can see, that U-turn doesn't do much. We would have definitely not been able to take this thing out. Uh, I can go into Tangrowth here, though. It's pretty safe. Uh, if he toxics me, he toxics me. If he Willows, he Willows. Uh, but I will be able to get a knockoff on something on my opponent's team. So, uh, my opponent goes for a taunt, that's awesome, we are able to get this Jellicent's item off of it, and now I can go for a Giga Drain, um, he should know this set, um, but I guess he doesn't care, <laughs> I'm gonna get a huge Giga Drain off right there, uh, the burn's gonna be nullified from that recovery, and my opponent has pretty much one switch right here, and it's Sigilyph, so I am just gonna go for the knockoff as he chooses to recover, okay, I'm gonna go for knockoff again, he recovers again, okay, I'm gonna be very, very, very stubborn here and I'm gonna go for the knockoff one more time he should not stay in I don't know why he's staying in here I'm gonna go for Giga Drain this time I doubt he'll switch uh, as he does stay in he lets me get recovery we actually get a, a very big hit off right there and now I'm going to play it a little bit risky I think uh, and go into Hitmonlee should I do that uh, I don't want to get Scald Burned that's the problem I do not want to get Scald Burned um, he is faster than us, uh, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get a drain right here. It's fine. Uh, that's okay. He can go into uh, Sigilyph right here. Uh, this thing does carry Heat Wave, so I'm gonna go into Alamomola as he chooses to go for a Psychic. Actually, this does 42%. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go for the. Hmm. You know what? Do I just Healing Wish here and just um, just bring back Tangrowth? I think that might actually be my play. How much HP do we have? Uh, half of that is 250. Year 404. Hmm. Let's go for the wish. Goes for the energy ball. It's not going to be able to take us out. We are going to go for the wish right here. And I'm going to switch into Tangrowth. As Tangrowth is going to be able to uh, eat up this psychic. Uh, get back a lot of HP. And I'm going to go for the knockoff right here. He does have the heat wave. He finally reveals it. I don't know why he didn't go for it earlier. I guess it was a good play on his part. Uh, it does cap out at 322. I need to calc if Zangoose is actually able to take this. Uh, from a life orb. Uh, Siglyph. Siglyph. Are you attacker? Uh, Psy Shock to Zangoose does... Well, what? That's Psy Shock. I want to see Psy Kick. Psy Kick does 85 to 101. So yeah, there's a chance we might not be able to take this. A very good chance. Um... I think I have to go into him only here, as much as I don't want to, uh, and I know the fake out is really, really obvious, but I don't think I have another play. Uh, as he actually stays in, that's awesome, we're able to get a huge fake out off right there. Uh, that's gonna really, really help, actually. Uh, Zangoose is toxic boosted, a quick attack, does not do too much. Um, I'm gonna go for the knockoff right here, I don't know if he knows that I can not, that I can actually touch him, but he's gonna go into Deancey, Moonblast is going to be able to take us out. Uh, and I don't think high jump kick comes even close, so I have to go for it though. We actually miss, uh, which is really unfortunate, but 
Uh, my opponent's gonna go for Moonblast right there, be able to knock us out. I can go into Alamomola for pretty much free here, and uh, I'm just gonna fire off a Wish. Uh, if he wants to go into Sigilyph, that's fine. I'll probably switch out into uh, Flygon at that point and try to get off, uh, I don't know, an Outrage. Uh, he does go straight into Sigilyph. I go for the Wish. I'm gonna go into Flygon right here. He doesn't seem anything to, ha to have anything to touch me. Goes for the Roost. And how much does a Banded Outrage do? I think this is the thing I have to get rid of to win. I can Toxic Sculpt and stall the rest of my opponent's team and knock it out with uh, Zangoose's Quick Attack. I just have to watch out for the Virizion. Sigilyph versus Flygon. Sorry guys, I'm thinking real hard about this one. Uh, Choice Banded Outrage does 103 to 121. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's get rid of this thing. I don't care that Deancey's coming in. I don't care. Let's go. Knock me out with a Moonblast. Do it. Uh, it is able to not knock us out. Okay. Wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> We're not done yet. Diamond Storm comes through. That's not going to do much. It does get the defense raised. That's not a problem. Uh, I am just going to throw out a Scald right here, actually, as my opponent goes straight into Verizion. If we get a burn right now, this is pretty huge. Uh, we do not. And uh, can I risk him going behind a sub? That is the question. I can go. I can throw out a, a toxic. I think I can live a leaf blade. Um, this is uh, that's that's a pretty good roll for us. Ninety-seven percent. Uh, he goes for swords dance. We are gonna get off this toxic right here. Um, the leaf blade is more than likely coming my way, but there's nothing I can really do about it. I think my play is to. How do I win this? Hold on. Because I can't lock myself into Earthquake on both Pokemon. So, do I save Alamomola, go into Zangoose? Yeah, that might be my play. Uh, save Alamomola, go into Zangoose, switch into Flygon, uh, click Earthquake to weaken it. Uh, he is Lum, he cured off the Toxic. How do I win this? Um, how do I win this? I think I need the Toxic again. Uh, his Leaf Blade is going to connect and knock us out. And now, I need to pray to get a huge, huge, huge Fire Punch off here. How much does a Bandit... Okay, no, he's faster than us, isn't he? Yeah, he's faster than us anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, we lose this game to... Wait, what? Why did he switch? I guess maybe he thought we were Scarfed? Scarf doesn't take out Sigala from full. Okay, so I get to go into Zangoose right here. Because I have to. Uh, as he goes for a Moonblast, he's going to knock us down really low. We are faster than this thing. Facade is going to do a tremendous amount, uh, regardless of the resist. And then can Flygon clutch this out with Earthquake, is the question. I don't think it can. No, there's no way that Flygon can win this. I'm just going to go for Facade. My opponent decides to switch into the Dredagon directly on my Facade, which is a very interesting play. Uh, now goes into Verizion, as I can go for a Quick Attack on this thing. Do 42% as he goes for a Leaf Blade. And there's no move I can knock my uh, I can lock myself into to win. Uh, but, <laughs> but if he chokes and goes for a Swords Dance... Uh, he's faster than us though, so he goes for the clo close combat and knocks us out. So that was an interesting last game. It was a very good, uh, very, very good game. Uh, the Sigilyph just put so much pressure on us. I guess that's one very big weakness that this team has is Life Orb Sigilyph. Uh, that thing is just a monster. In any tier, it shows up and it's really, really good. Uh, it always has, if it's accompanied with the correct team, it's it can destroy lives. So, gotta watch out for that thing. But, uh, that's gonna be it, guys, uh, for this live. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check me out on Twitter and on Facebook. Links are in the description down below. Leave a comment for me. Let me know how you think we could improve this team. I might bring it back in a later episode if we f tweak it up enough. So, uh, Zan Goose might not be the way to go. But at least we got to see it in that last game. Anyway, guys, that's it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Ciao.